Hey everybody, how's it going? I'm Rob, and welcome to my tutorial on how to solve a 5x5 Rubik's Cube Professor. At this point before proceeding, I highly recommend that you know how to solve both the regular 3x3 Rubik's Cube and also the 4x4 Rubik's Cube Revenge before attempting to solve the 5x5 Professor. I will be referring to both my 3x3 and 4x4 tutorials, both of which can be located on my channel playlists. Now, there is only one new algorithm that we're going to have to learn in order to solve the 5x5, as long as you know all the algorithms to solve the 3x3 and 4x4 cubes. And the new algorithm to solve the 5x5 is relatively short. Solving the 5x5 is very similar to solving the 4x4 as far as placing the centers and also pairing up the edge pieces. However, once you have done so on the 5x5 cube and corrected all the parity errors that occur with the edges, there are no additional parity errors that occur uh, when solving the rest of the cube. So to save some time, I'm not going to go over notation for the 5x5 cube since it is exactly the same as the 4x4 cube. The middle layer on the 5x5 cube is never turned by itself in any of the algorithms. Instead, we are only going to be turning the inside layers, like that, and also the inside and outside layers together, like we did in the 4x4 cube, and also the outside layers by themselves as well. So now I'd like to go over the component pieces of the 5x5 cube. Okay, so as you'll notice, the center block on each side of the cube is composed of nine pieces arranged as a 3x3 three three block. Just as in the 3x3 three three cube, the 5x5 five five has one fixed center piece on each side which never moves and that designates the color of the entire face. There are three different types of central pieces. There is that one middle center piece, there are four edge or side center pieces per side, and there are also four corner center pieces as well. Every side of the cube also has 12 edges, which make up what are called triple edge pieces or treads. Every tread piece is composed of what I like to call a middle edge piece and also two outer edge pieces. Just as in all cubes, there are also eight corner pieces on the entire cube. Just like the 4x4, we must first place the center pieces, then pair up the edge pieces and fix parity, and then solve the cube as a 3x3. Now let's go on to placing the centers on a mixed up 5x5. Alright, so what we're going to do first is to pick a bottom color and a top color and solve those centers first. I choose white for my bottom and yellow for my top, and I always solve the white center first. To do that, we're going to need to form 2x1 blocks like this one, we're going to, instead of joining two of them, like we did in the 4x4, we're going to join three of them to form a 2x3 block. We are then going to join a 3x1 block to that to complete the center. So let me show you what I mean. In this cube, I have already formed three 2x1 blocks. So if I wanted to join this one to this one, they need to be vertical. This one is in the bottom two layers of this 3x3, and this is also. So we could join that up, and then we would join this one to that to form a 2x3, and then finally join a 3x1 block to that to complete the center. So that's just an example. Now let's go into detail on how to do that. In order to do that, we need to first form a 2x1 block on the white side. To do that, we must first join an edge center piece to this middle center piece. So you look around the cube, for an edge centerpiece that is white. And it has to be in the middle layer here. It has to be either in this position or this position to join it to this center. If it was up here, you could not join it. So it's in this position, so we can flip it directly up next to this one. So now we have formed our first two by one block. Now we want to form another one. And as we're going to do that, you're going to notice that we're going to be joining mostly corner pieces, that corner center pieces with edge center pieces. So we have another 2x1 block already solved for us here. So if we hold this white center on the top face and we get this positioned on the front face, we could join them up. This is in the bottom two layers of the, um, of the top center. So we need to get these two in the bottom layers as well. So here's it's in the bottom layers. If you flipped it around like this, this is in the top left of this 3x3 three three block. So we couldn't join it like that. So we get it in the bottom right and now we can flip it directly up to form a 2x2 two two white block. 
So now we want to get one more 2 by 1 block here so that we form a 2 by 3. So we look around the cube. When you have two pieces on the same face like this, it's quite easy to join these two pieces up. All you have to do is basically hold it so that one is on the top and one is here on the bottom. Then what we could do is we basically lift this piece up to the top face, bring it down so that we because we want it here, so we have to get it in this position. So we bring it down and then we just bring it back. So now we have formed a two by one block by doing that. So let me do that real quick again. So it's here. If we want to bring it up, flip it down and then bring it back. So now we have another 2 by 1 block. So if we want to get it next to here, this one is in the top left of this 3 by 3 block. So we have to get an empty spot in the top left of this block. So if we twist it like that, now you'll see we could join this piece up to that. We couldn't put it like that because it wouldn't join. So we have to get that spot like that. Now we could uh, shift this piece up to the top and form a 2 by 3 block. So now we want to get that 3 by 1 white block in here. So we have, to we have to form that first. Okay, so we have a piece here and here and the other one is here. The white center is on the other side over here. So what we want to do, we could do that same move that we did to join those two pieces. In this case, it is in the top right. So we bring this piece up, shift it down, so that now it's in the correct position for joining it to this piece, and then we bring those both faces back down. So now we have formed a 2 by 1. However, we need to form a 3 by 1. So we need to join this piece up to that. As you'll see, this empty spot is in the bottom left, and so is this piece here. So we could flip this directly up. When we do that, you'll see we, that we mess up the center, so we have to shift this back. In order to do that, once we have joined this up, we have to get it out of the way so that we can bring this face back down. So you don't want any of these pieces to still be in this face. So now we could join that back down. Now you'll see this is on the right side and these two are on the left. So all we have to do is basically turn this 180 degrees and we have formed the first center. So now we want to form the opposite center which is yellow. So we do the same thing. We have a piece here that is a side middle piece, a side center piece, and it's in the middle layer. So we could flip it directly up. But as you'll notice, you'll mess up the center. So once you get it up, you get it out of the way so that no more yellow pieces are in this face. You turn it like that, and then you basically flip it back down to resolve the center. So that's one two by one block. Here's another one. As you'll notice, these two pieces are in the bottom two layers of this three by three block. So we have to get these two pieces in the bottom as well. So you wouldn't flip it like that because you couldn't join it like that. So you get it so that it is positioned in the bottom right like that. And now you could flip it up. And when you do that, you're going to mess up the center. So we flip it up, get it out of the way so that no yellow pieces are in this face. And then we flip it back down. So we have that and now we have a 2x2 two two yellow block. So now we want to form another 2x1 yellow block and get it next to this 2x2. Two two. So we already have a 2x1 yellow block here. So it's in the upper left of this 3x3. Three three. So we have to get an empty spot in the upper left. So now you'll see we could flip this directly up next to that. We could also, if you wanted to, if this piece was here in the bottom right, we could also get it so that this piece is in the bottom right as well and then you can flip it up. So once we flip it up you'll notice you're going to mess up the center so we flip it up and now we have to put this layer back down so we don't want any yellow pieces in that layer because it'll just bring it back down. So we flip it up and then we get it out of the way so now this layer is completely cleared. So now we can bring it back down and we have the white center resolved and we have a 2 by 3 block of yellow. So now we want to form the 3 by 1 to get it in there. So as you'll see white is on the right and yellow is on the left. So we can basically, we don't have to worry about messing up any of these centers yet. Okay, so we have a corner center piece here and we have an edge center piece. This one's in the bottom layer, so we get this one in the bottom layer. Now we can flip it up and we formed a two by one block. 
So now we have to look for the last piece, which is here. This piece is in the bottom left, but this empty spot is in the top left. So we basically just flip this up, and now we could flip that up and form the 3 by one Okay, so now we have to join this piece up here. We can't just flip it like that, because it'll mess up the centers. So we basically get this piece, turn it 180 degrees around, and we kick this piece out by flipping it up, turn the top 180, and then bring it back down. That's a similar move to the one done in the 4x4 tutorial. And if you did all that step, all the steps correctly, you should have two completed centers. So now you're ready to move on to the second part of the centers.